Greetings citizens, my name is Chris, and in this video I will be explaining the configuration for the NPC factions so that you might create your own. In the StarMade directory, head into the data folder. Here you will find the NPC factions folder. Inside you will find the folders for the default factions of the game, as well as default configuration files. The first file we will look at is the NPC spawn config.xml file. This file can be opened with any text editor like Notepad or Notepad++. I will be using Adobe Dreamweaver. With this file open, we can see the initial spawn conditions for the factions in the game. A lot of this should be self-explanatory as it includes comments for each of the values. Highlighted is the section dedicated to the trading guild. You will be able to designate whether they spawn randomly or if they have a fixed system to spawn in. You will also be able to name the faction from here as it will appear in the game. Next, we have a description that you can type up for your faction. The possible presets option allows you to list which NPC config files to use for your faction. Those NPC config files determine how the faction operates in the game, and we will take a look at those in a moment. Adding more than one preset means the faction may choose from multiple behaviors when spawning in-game. Lastly, we can see the initial growth value, which determines how many systems the faction will take initially. Using a value of negative 1, we'll use the initial growth setting within the preset config file. If we wanted to add a new faction to spawn, we would need to copy the format displayed here. This is where proper text editing programs come in handy, as you can see the format more easily. I have highlighted the section dedicated for the trading guild. It starts with faction and ends with forward slash faction. If you are new to any sort of coding or text-based config files, copying the format is essential, or it won't work copy it and paste it right after itself. You can now define how this new faction spawns using the values we just went over. Replace the values with your own on these copied settings. Let's head back to the NPC Factions folder and take a look inside one of these folders. We will need these to create our factions as well. Inside the Trading Guild folder we can find the blueprints.zip file and the npcconfig.xml file. Inside the blueprints.zip we will find all the stations and ships that belong to the faction. They are simply taken straight from the Blueprints folder in the main directory, zipped up, and placed here. Let's open the npcconfig.xml file. This is where the meat of the faction configuration comes from. This file determines almost all of the behaviors for a faction. It is also a bit more complicated than the last file we looked at. First, you will notice that listed is a classification for every ship and station role in the game. Below it, a weight is listed then a mass distribution, which is followed by multiple digits. The comment at the head of this file explains the distribution system. To start, each ship or station classification listed here is given a weight value. This determines how often the faction will spawn that particular type of ship or station. If I have a high value in the mining class, then many mining ships will spawn for this faction. If I have equal values for two classifications, it will spawn them at the same rate. If the weight is set to zero, then nothing in that classification will spawn. The mass distribution is similar, in that it designates how ships are spawned based on its mass. Listed is a series of digits, some with different values. Consider these digits a scale that corresponds with mass. The first digit will represent the lightest ship in your blueprints file. The last digit correlates to the heaviest ship. There is a mass distribution for every single classification and it will only affect the ships or stations with matching classifications. Highlighted is the mass distribution for the Trade Guild's defensive ships. Currently the Trade Guild has four defensive ships, the Drone, the Fighter, the Bomber, and the Frigate. The higher the value of a digit, the more likely it is to spawn a ship with that particular mass. The first digit represents the lightest ship, which is the Drone. The last digit represents the heaviest ship, which is the Frigate. If we add up all these digits, we get 38. If 38 defensive ships are spawned in the game, 10 of them would be drones, 2 of them would be frigates, and the rest would be fighters or bombers, whose mass is in between the two. Of course, you can add or remove digits in this distribution as you like, and they can be set to any number, although there is no need to use extreme values. This distribution system allows you to designate what types of ships and stations to spawn, how often they spawn, and what their mass will be. But you will notice, as you scroll down, that this is all listed twice. This is here so that you can define a different set of behaviors based on distance. 
The first listing is used to determine what spawns far away from the home base, and the second listing is used for spawning assets closer to the home base. If you wanted, you can spawn more mining ships on the fringes of your faction and defensive ships closer to the home base, and so on. The next set of values covers other attributes such as their starting credits amount, how often they trade, and the rate at which they will mine. There are too many values to discuss here, but luckily we have comments on all of these so that you can see what each one does. Next up, we have diplomacy values. These values determine how the diplomacy score is affected, and for how long. A lot of this is subjective, as it is currently the most unbalanced aspect of these config files. That which is displayed currently is by no means a perfect set of values for a faction. You will see the various actions you can take with factions and their effects on the diplomacy score of that faction, and how many faction turns it will take for that status to wear off. Near the bottom of the list, one can find a few more values that determine things like the maximum number of fleets in a system, whether the faction will abandon systems, and whether they will attack stations. Again, it is worth looking over the comments listed to determine what these values all do. Lastly, we are going to look at the different ship and station classifications so you better understand what each one does for the faction. Mining ships are of course used to mine resources, but stations can also be given the mining role. They will add bonuses to the mining rate of a system when they are spawned. Support ships are used to help fleets. The AI does not currently function for these ships, but it means a ship will be able to target its allies so that it can provide power, shields, or other effects in the future. Cargo ships are used to transport goods between stations. They may be accompanied by an escort. Defensive ships are used to patrol a faction's territory. Defensive stations have little use, but may have a role in future updates. Attack ships are used for attacking the enemy. At the moment, defensive ships are also designated as attack ships, so you do not have to save the ships twice. This is something that can be changed with the NPC config files. Carriers do not do anything at the moment, but in the future it will work with the AI to allow the deployment of smaller craft and their recall. Other features unique to carriers may eventually be added, and that is where this role will come into play. Scout ships also do not do much at the moment, as the AI does not support it. They may provide a specific function in future updates. Scavenger ships are used to clean up the wrecks of ships after battles have taken place. Eventually, scavenger stations will boost the resources gathered from scavenging ships. Shipyard stations will eventually be the location where ships are spawned from. Outpost stations are used for differentiating stations at the moment and serve little use. Again, they may be given a specific purpose in future updates. Factory stations produce more advanced materials. A faction can be set to focus on its manufacturing, to meet its demands. Trade stations are the designated home bases of a faction, and are the point from which a faction will trade with other factions via trade routes. Waypoint stations are for warp gates. In the future, the AI will be able to use warp gates for faster travel across space. Shopping stations allow players to buy resources from the faction while they are in range. And that is the current set of roles that you can give your ships and stations. This is a lot of information to cover, and we hope with this information you will be able to create your own factions. In the future, we will streamline the process for adding blueprints to custom factions and sharing them with others. Of course, there will also be future changes to this system, and it is likely we will make new tutorials in the future should the need arise. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and thank you for playing StarMade.